Hey traders, welcome back to the Caffeinated Traders Lounge, where we serve up hot brews and even hotter market insights every Sunday. Grab your favorite brew and settle in because today, we're diving deep into the latest economic data that dropped this past week and how it could impact the markets, particularly the Forex game. We've got it all, non-farm payrolls, PMIs, inflation figures, and a whole lot of global action. Whether you're new here or one of the regulars, you know we keep it fun, caffeinated, and packed with all the juicy data you need to make smart moves. So let's see how this is going to play out in the Forex and stock markets this coming week. And hey, don't worry, I'll save the best trade ideas for the end, so stick around. Let's jump in. United States, jobs are poppin', but factories are floppin'. The U.S. dollar right now is like that overachiever at work who's great at some things but kind of dropping the ball elsewhere. On one hand, the labor market's having a moment. Non-farm payrolls crushed expectations with 254,000 new jobs in September, way above the 147,000 forecast. The unemployment rate dipped to 4.1%, and wages are sneaking up 0.4%, which means people are not only working but also getting paid. With the job market flexing this hard, the Federal Reserve isn't likely to start handing out interest rate cuts like candy anytime soon. So, yay for the dollar. But hold on, it's not all rainbows and dollar signs. Manufacturing? Yeah, not so much. The ISM manufacturing PMI is stuck at 47.3, which is like your factory worker just pressing the pause button. It's still in contraction mode, and construction isn't much better. Spending slipped 0.1% in August, and residential construction dropped 1.5%. Apparently, even the housing market decided to take a little snooze, despite mortgage rates falling. Go figure. Meanwhile, the services sector is doing its best to keep things together. The ISM non-manufacturing PMI hit a solid 54.9, signaling growth. But even here, there's a little hiccup. Employment in the services sector dropped to 48.1. So, while the economy's backbone is holding up, it's got a bit of a crick in its neck. For the US dollar, this sets up a bit of a roller coaster. Jobs are popping, which gives the dollar a boost, but with factories flopping and construction snoozing, it's hard to get too excited. The US dollar index, DXY, is hanging tough, but traders should probably buckle up. It's likely to be a bumpy ride with lots of opportunities for those who love a little market drama. Europe, falling like a hot cup of coffee. The euro right now is kind of like that cup of coffee you forgot about. It's cooling off fast and not in the good iced latte kind of way. Germany's PMI is stuck in the basement at 40.6, and it's not alone in its misery. Italy's at 48.3, and France is chilling at 44.6, making it a triple threat of manufacturing decline. Meanwhile, inflation in Germany has slid to a lukewarm 1.8%. So, no excitement on that front either. What's the big takeaway here? Well, the European Central Bank, ECB, might start warming up to the idea of rate cuts. That's not exactly a confidence booster for the euro, which could soon feel as unappealing as that cold coffee sitting on your desk. If inflation doesn't heat up and manufacturing keeps snoozing, the euro could be in for a rough time. So if you're trading EUR, USD, maybe keep your expectations as low as the temperature of that forgotten brew. It gets worse. Eurozone inflation overall isn't much better. It's down to 2.7%, so the ECB isn't exactly feeling hawkish. ECB President Christine Lagarde even said domestic demand is, well, weak. Ouch. And if you thought manufacturing was bad, the services sector isn't coming to the rescue either. The composite PMI for the Eurozone slipped below 50, meaning business activity is shrinking across the board. All signs point to some bearish moves for the Euro, but before you hit the sell button with full force, remember that the Fed isn't exactly signaling dovishness either. The EUR-USD pair might be in for some downside, unless Europe gets a caffeine shot in the arm, and fast. So, for now, it looks like the euro might keep falling like your enthusiasm after realizing that coffee's gone cold. UK. The Pound's Balancing Act. The British pound is currently walking a bit of a tightrope, trying to balance some surprising good news with a fair share of not-so-great headlines. On one hand, 
house prices in the UK decided to take off, rising 0.7% in September, way above expectations, with a 3.2% yearly jump. Apparently, Brits are still snapping up homes like it's the Great British Bake Off finale, and they can't resist another slice of property. But just when you think things are looking up, business confidence takes a nosedive to plus 47%, the lowest in three months. It seems the Brits are feeling a little jittery about the economy, and who can blame them? GDP growth came in at 0.5%, which is decent, but the current account deficit is widening, and that's never a good look for the pound. Meanwhile, the services PMI dropped to 52.4. Not terrible, but definitely losing some momentum, kind of like when you realize your tea's gone cold. And with wage growth cooling to 4.0%, its lowest in two years, the labor market isn't exactly doing a victory lap. So, what does all this mean for the pound? Well, the Bank of England, BOE, doesn't seem to be in a rush to hike rates, which could leave the pound looking a bit shaky. House prices may be propping it up for now, but with business confidence and wages softening, it's starting to feel like a classic wait-and-see situation. If you're trading GBP slash USD, keep an eye on the BOE because that's likely to be the key driver in the coming weeks. In the meantime, while the U.S. might be sipping strong coffee, the U.K. seems to be reaching for an energy drink, but the effects are wearing off fast. The pound might see some sideways action, but if the U.S. data keeps outperforming, the pound could be left standing awkwardly in the corner, clutching its property gains for dear life. Australia. Steady as she goes. The Australian dollar is quietly holding its ground like an Aussie battler who's mastered the art of staying cool under pressure. While other economies are dealing with some serious issues, down under, things are surprisingly steady. Australia's flexing a budget surplus of 15.8 billion Australian dollars, which is like showing up to a party with the best beer. Everyone else is impressed, but also slightly jealous. Retail sales are up 0.7% for August. And year over year, they've risen 3.1%. So clearly, Aussies are out there spending like it's a beach day and the Barbie's sizzling. Inflation is also sitting comfortably at 2.7%, right within the Reserve Bank of Australia's target range. So, unlike some central banks scrambling to figure out their next move, the RBA seems content to kick back for now, probably watching some cricket. With all this in mind, rate cuts aren't on the horizon which means good news for the AUD. For traders, this makes the AUD-USD one of the more bullish stories of the week. While other economies are wrestling with inflation, business confidence, or manufacturing slowdowns, Australia's just over here enjoying a fiscal surplus and strong consumer spending. The Aussie dollar is looking pretty strong, especially compared to currencies struggling with inflation or rate cut chatter. So if you're trading the Aussie, it might feel like one of the few currencies that's not in the middle of an existential crisis. While others are chugging coffee and energy drinks trying to keep up, the Aussie dollar's sitting back, relaxed, and sipping a nice cold one. Cheers to that. Canada. The Maple Leaf struggles. The Canadian dollar is having a bit of an identity crisis right now. On one hand, the manufacturing sector is showing signs of life with the PMI finally ticking up to 50.4 the first expansion in 17 months. It's like Canada's factories woke up from a long winter nap, stretched, and decided to start being productive again. But just when you think it's time to celebrate, the services PMI crashes the party, slumping to 46.4. Looks like the rest of the economy is still hitting the snooze button. Inflation, meanwhile, is creeping back in like that unwelcome relative who keeps showing up at family gatherings. This puts some serious pressure on the Bank of Canada to keep things tight and avoid rate cuts for now. And while manufacturing's glimmer of hope might give the loonie a little boost, rising inflation and a sluggish services sector are making sure it doesn't get too comfortable. For traders, this is a bit of a mixed bag, like finding maple syrup in your coffee instead of sugar. Sure, manufacturing could help stabilize the CAD, but with services dragging their feet and inflation refusing to chill, you can expect some volatility in USD CAD. Oh, and let's not forget oil prices, which aren't exactly coming to the rescue either. 
So, while the Canadian dollar is showing a little fight, it's also dealing with some pretty heavy headwinds. Think of it as a lumberjack trying to chop down a tree while his maple syrup pancakes are burning in the background. It's not a disaster, but it's definitely going to be a bit of a mess before things smooth out. Japan. The Yen Roller Coaster. The Japanese Yen, JPY, right now feels like it's riding a roller coaster, but not the fun kind. It's more like the one where you're not sure if you should scream or laugh. On one hand, Japan's retail sales are up 2.8% in August, and unemployment dropped to a super low 2.5%. People are out shopping, jobs are secure, things seem great. But then you look over at industrial output, which plummeted by 3.3%, and suddenly the good news feels like it's taken a nosedive. For an export-heavy economy like Japan's, that's like finding out your sushi order is all rice and no fish. Manufacturing's not exactly pulling its weight either, with a PMI of 49.7, just below that magical 50 line, meaning contraction. But here's the twist. Japan's services sector is quietly minding its own business, holding steady at a solid 53.1. It's like the one friend in the group who's got their act together while everyone else is freaking out. For traders, the yen might catch a little love in the short term, especially if domestic spending stays strong. But with industrial output tanking, don't be shocked if the yen quickly loses steam, kind of like realizing your matcha latte isn't as energizing as you hoped. The Bank of Japan, BOJ, is in a bit of a pickle too. With industrial output flopping and inflation creeping up, they're not likely to make any bold moves anytime soon. But if inflation keeps rising, the BOJ might have to jump into action, eventually. So for now, expect some volatility in the USD slash JPY pair, because while Japan's economy is trying to balance spending with a manufacturing slump, the yen is hanging on like it's on a teacup ride that just won't slow down. Buckle up. How it all ties together. So how does all this economic chaos tie together? Imagine the global currency market as a dinner party where each currency brings a dish. The US dollar shows up with a big, hearty casserole, thanks to its strong labor market. But halfway through the meal, everyone realizes the casserole is a bit dry. Manufacturing and construction are dragging things down a bit. It's still the life of the party, though, just maybe not as popular as it was at the start. Meanwhile, the euro? It brought a sad little salad. With inflation cooling and manufacturing contracting, the ECB might ease up soon, and no one's really diving in for seconds. The pound, on the other hand, brought a mix of fancy appetizers. Some are a hit, house prices, but others are leaving guests scratching their heads. Business confidence. You never really know how it'll go. The Aussie dollar shows up like that laid-back friend with a solid barbecue plate. Nothing fancy, but it's reliable and surprisingly strong. The CAD? That friend who can't decide between bringing a dessert or a side dish? It's a wild card. Manufacturing's looking up, but services are slumping, so it's a bit of a toss-up. Then there's the yen, who showed up late, looking a bit frazzled. Retail and jobs are fine, but industrial output is in shambles. It's like they brought sushi, but half the rolls are falling apart. As for the yuan? Well, it's kind of sulking in the corner. China's contraction issues mean the yuan isn't exactly contributing much to the party right now. In short, expect the US dollar to keep dominating the dinner conversation, but with everyone else stumbling a bit, it's going to be a bumpy ride for the rest of the currencies this week. Buckle up, traders. This dinner party isn't over yet. What's my best guess? All right, let's get to the juicy part. What pairs should you keep an eye on this week? Here's my best shot at making sense of all this economic chaos. Your ears USD. Leaning bearish. The euro is like that friend who shows up late to the party and immediately spills a drink, struggling to keep it together while the US is still flexing its strong labor market. GBP per USD. Choppy at best. The pound is that wildcard guest who brings both a fancy bottle of wine and a half-eaten bag of crisps. Housing is solid, but business confidence? Not so much. Might lean bearish if the BOE keeps playing it safe. AUD per USD. Bullish. 
Australia is like the reliable mate who shows up with a perfect barbecue. Retail sales are up, the budget's in surplus, and the Aussie dollar's holding strong. NZD per USD, meh. The Kiwis kind of like Australia's quieter cousin. Might tag along with the AUD's strength, but don't expect it to steal the spotlight. USD per CAD, volatile. The loony is like the guest who keeps switching seats at the table. Manufacturing is picking up, but services are a mess, so expect some ups and downs depending on inflation and data. USD JPY. Short-term yen strength could pop up, but long-term, the dollar's probably going to hog the limelight. The yen's industrial output is looking like that dish everyone pretends to enjoy, but really, it's just not working. USD per CHF. Steady as she goes. The Swiss franc is the dependable friend who shows up with a casserole, safe and solid, just like its reputation as a haven currency. Expect it to stay strong alongside the USD. Oh, and don't forget to keep an eye on the dollar index. As long as US job numbers are flexing like they're on steroids, the dollar's likely to stay firm. So, while some currencies are wobbling, the USD is holding court like the life of the Forex party. Wrapping it up, there you have it, traders. That's your weekly dose of caffeine and market insights from the Caffeinated Traders Lounge. Keep an eye on those economic indicators, trade smart, and don't let the market grind you down. Remember, we're here every Sunday brewing up fresh insights to keep you sharp and ahead of the game. If you found this helpful, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you next week. Until next time, stay caffeinated, stay trading. Cheers.